that it was Valentine's Day, and uh, uh, we looked at uh, a different message altogether. We're going to get back into our lesson and the lesson series, and uh, uh, we're in the lesson series, Blessed is the Man. We're on lesson number one, uh, The Secret of True Happiness and Joy, and uh, we uh, do have a new lesson, or another page, or two pages, I guess, uh, but uh, it's front and back, so it's just one piece of paper, but... um, He's handing that out right now, and uh, I'm going to review real quick like here, and uh, if you need pages one through four, if you'd raise your hand, we'll get that to you as quickly as possible, and uh, uh, that way uh, you have that, so, excuse me, Psalm chapter number one, I'm going to read it real quick like here, and then we'll uh, I'll review uh, uh, quickly as well. And then we'll get right back into the lesson here. Psalm chapter number one, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper." The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not uh, stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And uh, uh, we're looking at the secret of true happiness and joy. Of course, uh, we've been talking about uh, uh, that you and I as Christians uh, can be happy or, or uh, blessed, and uh, certainly there's a picture here. Uh, we talked about uh, God's picture of the happy man is vitality, a tree. Uh, it denotes life, security. Uh, a tree planted uh, means uh, uh, when uh, uh, storms come, uh, the tree remains. Uh, capacity, it's by the rivers of water. Uh, this, of course, means that we get our sufficiency in Christ. Uh, then fertility brings uh, bring forth his fruit, it denotes uh, fruitfulness, and uh, you and I ought to be fruitful. Christians, amen. Uh, but uh, uh, propriety, uh, fruit in his season. And uh, when we follow God's plan in the correct way, God uh, intends to uh, accomplish his plans uh, through us, amen. And uh, he desires for each of us to be used of the Lord. And then we uh, talked about perpetuity, his leaf shall not wither, and uh, meaning it uh, shall be, uh, he has eternal life, but uh, even what we do can last beyond what we are, you know, what, what we last here on earth, amen. Uh, our uh, labors, our influence uh, can uh, certainly last to another generation or two. Uh, prosperity, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And, uh, you know, that's the uh, sum of all the things that happen there. You know, we're, uh, when we're in God's will, we're able to reap his prosperity. We talked about it's not prosperity gospel, but certainly there's a principle there. Then we uh, looked at uh, God's plan for the happy man. And uh, uh, we talked about how uh, repentance is uh, turning away from sin, turning to the Savior. And uh, it's uh, implied here by three words, not, nor, and nor uh, there. Uh, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful there in verse number one. And uh, uh, we talked about how it uh, uh, it must be complete, turning uh, from the counsel of the ungodly, uh, from the way of the sinners, and from sitting with the scornful, and then uh, uh, we talked about how there's a subtle uh, progress, progression of sin or digression of sin, however you want to look at it, but there's uh, first he's walking, next he's standing, next you know, you know he's sitting and uh, not doing anything for the Lord. We ended there on page number four, letter D is where we ended. We're going to pick up there uh, letter E here in just a moment. Before we do, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank and praise you for all that you do for us. Lord, thank you for each one that's able to be here. Lord, we know uh, there are some that have sickness. Lord, we know uh, there's been uh, still sickness going around and whatnot. But Lord, uh, we ask that you would uh, just touch bodies, heal them up, and help them be able to come back and worship with us this Sunday. But Lord, I pray that uh, uh, you would meet with us here tonight, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts and challenge us and change us, and Lord, uh, certainly our desire is that uh, each one would be a uh, a happy and joyful Christian, Lord, that's uh, certainly uh, the desire in my heart for each each and every Christian here at Birch Tree Baptist Church, and Lord, I pray that you'd, uh, through this lesson, through uh, uh, your word, uh, Lord, help us to be able to 
uh, take those things, apply them to our heart and our life, Lord, that we could be that happy and joyful Christian. Bless in our time together. We'll be sure to give you all praise and glory for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Picking up there, as I said, page number four, letter E. Uh, of course, the plan for uh, the happy man is, of course, repentance, turning away from uh, sin and uh, the counsel the, of the ungodly, the way of the sinner, and the sitting with the scornful, and turning to the Lord. But next, uh, uh, the next part of that plan is this, faith. You know, uh, uh, faith is... Uh, uh, of course, we know, we have the uh, you know the definition of faith you know in, in Hebrews chapter eleven, but uh, you know we we base everything that we have upon faith. All right, none of us were there when God created the world, but I believe with all my heart that God created the world in six literal days. The Bible tells us uh, you know there was uh, uh, the first day and, and second day and se- you know so on and fo- uh, so forth. And then on the seventh day, he rested. So I believe there was six literal days. There was not a gap. You know, there wasn't a thousand years. There wasn't a million years in between each day. Uh, you know, I've heard people say, well, you know, the Bible says a thousand years is a day in, in God's eyes and, and a day is as a thousand years. And, and uh, you know, there's no evidence. You look at the Bible, the Bible literally says, and the first day, and he rested. And the second day, and he rested, so on on and so forth. Uh, so I believe it. You know, uh, there's every, with every fiber of my being, I believe God's word. You know, uh, you look at uh, uh, the things that are written in the word of God. I mentioned this, uh, I think it was Sunday night, if I remember correctly. Uh, we were talking about how uh, these, these things were written for are in samples. Amen. And because uh, I kept looking in 2 Corinthians, it was in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And uh, you all remember, amen. See, kidneys, amen. But uh, anyways, uh, uh, we, uh, we need to realize that uh, God has the word of God there for us to help our faith, to help us to grow, to uh, help us to realize, hey, God is real. God's able to do things. Uh, God's able to accomplish things. Uh, but uh, turn with me, if you will. You can keep your finger there in, in Psalm 1. We'll come back to you here in a little bit. But turn with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Faith is believing that God can and will perform that which he said he would, though we cannot see, feel, or touch it. You know, uh, uh, if you look at uh, uh, all the things that uh, uh, happened in, uh, uh, in the Bible, boy, I tell you, there are some people that had some faith, amen? Uh, well, sometimes we think we have some faith, but then you look at the scriptures and you're like, uh, for instance, Joseph. Joseph, uh, you know, stayed faithful to the Lord. You know, uh, he didn't have the luxury of looking at his life in the Bible and saying, oh, you know what? Everything turns out all right. It'll be okay. I'll be fine. You know, this is good. I'll just keep, uh, you know, doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, He didn't have that luxury. Uh, Job. Job didn't have the luxury of being able to look in the scripture and say, hey, what chapter do I finally, you know, uh, get everything, you know, everything gets uh, you know, given back to me and all that. He didn't have that luxury. He just, by faith, he maintained his integrity. He kept being faithful to the Lord. No matter what else happened, he was faithful to, um, faithful to the Lord. But notice with me Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number one. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things, what? Not seen. We we could not see the world uh, created, but we see the evidence of the world created. Amen. We cannot see. Uh, you know, it's like this. Uh, you cannot see electricity. All right. You say, well, yeah, I can. I I can see this uh, right here. The lights are on. No, the lights are a result. You know, that it's a an effect of the electricity. Electricity itself, you cannot see. But you certainly can see the effects. If you go stick your finger in that light socket, I'm not encouraging you to do that tonight. But if you go and do that, you'll feel the effects of electricity. Amen. Does it? You know, you'll get a quick uh, jolt, and and uh, you'll be like, "Ow, boy, that hurt." Amen. Um, and if you've ever anybody ever touched an electric fence accidentally or on purpose or whatever, or somebody pushed into it. Amen. I know I have, amen? And uh, there's like a pulsing that goes through it. And uh, depending on what animal they have on there, they change that pulse and, and whatever it may be. And sometimes you kind of feel that and you're, you're, you're just touching it just at the right time and, and you feel that jerk, you know, that, that pulsing. Why? You feel the, uh, the effects of electricity. And same way with the Lord. As God's working in our heart's life, we're not gonna see God, amen, 
uh, but we certainly can see the effects of God. Amen? We can see him working. You know, uh, uh, I've been encouraged by, uh, you know, in the last, I don't know, six months here, and maybe, maybe a little bit longer even, but, but uh, certainly in the last six months, we, we have been seeing God working. We're seeing souls saved. We've seen, we've seen people getting baptized. You know, we've had, uh, just since the beginning of this year, we've already had two baptized. You know, that's been pretty amazing, amen? And, uh, uh, you know, pray, pray for Ricardo, by the way, in the military. But, but you and I need to realize, hey, God is trying to work in our hearts and lives, and we can believe, you know, uh, certainly we can believe that God is working. You know, uh, notice what he said there in, in uh, verse, uh, verse number two. For by it... The elders obtained a good report. You know, uh, faith is what, uh, you know, if you were to look at the rest of this chapter, and we're, we're not going to look at this chapter in depth, excuse me, but if you look at uh, each one of these, you know, uh, uh, one of them was, uh, you know, uh, Enoch. Uh, Enoch, he walked with God, and he pleased God, and, and uh, you know, even says in verse number six, but without faith it is impossible to please God, uh, please him, for he that uh, cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You know, you and I need to realize, hey, God is trying to work in our hearts and lives through us so that others can see it. Uh, I think of uh, Noah, you know, you look at his life. Uh, he had never seen rain. You know, could you imagine uh, never seeing rain before? You know, we, we get rain, we get snow, and, and boy, I'm so glad uh, we're getting some warm weather again. And, and uh, you know, if we, even if we get snow now, you know, it's not going to last very much. You know, it, it'll last maybe a day or two. Or this last snow, I think it lasts maybe a couple of weeks. You know, I'm okay with that. I like the kind of snow that comes, melts away, and then, uh, you know, we don't see it for a while. Amen. <laughs> But, yeah, amen, all of us like that, amen. But you and I need to realize that as a Christian, we can't always see how God is working. We can't always see, uh, you know, uh, when he's working behind the scenes, but we can have faith that he's working. We can have faith and trust that he's able to do what he said he, he will do, amen? You, uh, uh, but just have to crack open the, the scriptures and you'll see that over and over. This happy man, uh, th- I'm sorry, this man is now happy because uh, he has turned from verse one uh, in, uh, ver- uh, uh, to verse number two, from sin uh, to God, from sinners to Christ, from the world to the will, and look back on our text there. He says there, In verse number one, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Remember, he's uh, saying, hey, uh, this is the happy man that is able to turn from this. But notice in verse number two, but his delight is where? In the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. You know, that's what it's talking about there, that uh, we're turning away from, uh, you know, in, in faith, saying, hey, I'm going to trust the Lord, the way of the Lord, and, uh, you know, he now becomes a man of faith. Uh, this, this psalmist uh, could not see ahead, amen, but he was willing to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to turn from, uh, uh, you know, the, the sinners, I'm going to turn away from uh, the uh, uh, ungodly, I'm going to turn away from the scornful, and I'm going to trust God, I'm going to follow God, and I'm going to uh, uh, Delight in his word and what he has to say. I think a lot of Christians are not happy because they don't live the true life of faith. You know, they they want to they want to see around the corner. They want to see what's ahead. They want to see, you know, uh, uh, they, they can't see that the Red Sea is not uh, you know, crossable at the time. And they say, well, I, I don't want to start walking across. You know, I think of that time uh, uh, when the children of Israel, they're getting ready to go into the promised land and uh, right near Jericho there. And, uh, and in the Jordan River, the priests had to literally step into the river before it stopped flowing, amen? As long as it was still flowing and as long as they're standing on the, that bank, uh, it's not gonna stop. It wasn't until they took that step of faith that that's when, if you look at the scripture there, that's when that water began to uh, recede. That's when it stopped, amen? Yes, sir. 
Yeah, amen. The, the other two guys behind, they were carrying the Ark of the Covenant and, and uh, they start uh, you know, walking. And the guys are like, oh, it's not stopping yet. Oh, well, they're going forward. Oh, oh, okay, I'll follow. Amen. That's a pretty good thought. Amen. But you and I need to realize that God desires us to have faith like that, just saying, Lord, I can't see what's up ahead. I don't, may, I, I don't maybe understand what's uh, around the corner, but Lord, I'm going to trust you. I think a lot of Christians are living that life because they're wanting to see, amen? They're wanting to see the results. They're wanting to see uh, uh, ahead. And God says, nope. Uh, you know, uh, uh, oh, what is that uh, uh, verse? Uh, <laughs> um, so the just shall live by faith. Uh, my mind is drawing a blank here. Um, but uh, uh, for we live by faith, not by sight. Anyways, that's, that's the two verses I was thinking of. But uh, uh, the Bible is very clear on that. We have to trust him by faith and just say, Lord, I can't see around the corner, but I'm going to trust you by faith. So we see there, as far as the God, uh, God's plan for the happy man, we see uh, uh, a, the plan is repentance. We see also, also the plan is faith. Something else we see here is uh, obedience. Obedience. You know, we can learn to obey just as simply as a child. You know, uh, um, you know, I mentioned this not too long ago. You know, when you put a child up on a high place and then you tell them, you know, you're down below and you're like, hey, jump. As an adult, we don't have the faith like a child, What do we? We look at the individual, you know, if I was up high, if I was standing up here, Brother, Brother Novobilsky came up here and said, Pastor, jump. My brain would be thinking, okay, I know he's a pretty good guy, pretty sturdy guy, but I'm pretty sure he's not going to catch me. I'm pretty sure that uh, he's probably going to step out of the way, or maybe, you know, if he does try to catch me, uh, he's going to get hurt, I'm going to hurt, uh, we're both going to get hurt, whatever, uh, we're going to get injured. So our minds begin to think, oh, no, this isn't really possible. But when we put a child up there, and we say, you know, we get a, a, a child like Luca, and we put Luca up there, and we say, hey, Luca, jump. What's he going to do? He's going to jump. Amen? Why? Especially if it's mom or dad, he trusts implicitly that mom or dad is going to catch him no matter what. Hey, mom or dad said jump. Hey, I'm going to jump. Amen? That's the kind of faith that God desires for us to have. Look back in our text there. And notice in verse number two, he said, but his delight is in the law of who? The Lord. Now he becomes a man of obedience as he learns this simple lesson. And because he's a man of obedience, this means that faith plus obedience brings about true happiness. You know, many times we sing uh, uh, the song, uh, Trust and Obey. You know, in the chorus there, you know, I, I like, uh, there, there's two, two songs that we many times sing. One is obedience, you know. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe doing exactly what the Lord commands and doing it happily. Action is the key. Do it immediately and joy you will receive. Obedience is the very best way to show that you, Amen. You know, the problem with a lot of Christians, and now you're all going to have that stuck in your head, and you're like, Pastor, why? Amen. And, uh, and then you'll sing the chorus. Amen. But as Christians, we need to be able to say, hey, Lord, I do believe. And so therefore, because I believe, I'm going to obey. Amen. The problem with some Christians, they struggle with that obedience. They, they struggle with that, just that simple step there. And, uh, you know, we sing the song, Trust and Obey as well. In the chorus, it says, trust and obey, for there's no other way, in that next phrase, to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. You know, so many times we sing songs like that, and we miss those uh, nuggets of uh, truth you know, uh, uh, there, there are times we, uh, uh, you know, put the words even up on the screen. And I hope, uh, I hope you don't just look at the words or think, oh, yeah, we're just singing this song or whatever. Um, and, uh, but really look at the words. Next time we're singing, you know, uh, tonight we sang, uh, uh, there were a couple of songs that we sang. One of them 
uh, was this one right here. The comforter has come. You know, don't just sing the words. Look at what you're singing, amen? And you'll realize there's a lot of truth right there just in the hymns that we're singing that uh, are there to be a help to us. And we as Christians need to be willing to say, Lord, help me to learn to trust you and obey you. And uh, Lord, I may not always understand the next step ahead of me, but Lord, if you said to cross into the, you know, take a step into the Jordan River, I'll do that. Uh, I, I preached uh, about, uh, I don't remember when it was, but uh, uh, real recently, I, I know that, uh, about Naaman and uh, the contrast between Naaman and Gehazi, uh, Elisha's uh, um, um, uh, servant, and uh, their obedience. You know, I, I mentioned this, that it had Naaman, you know, dipped only six times into the uh, Jordan River, he would not have been healed of his leprosy. Had he just, you know, said, well, this isn't working. I, I don't see any results of this. I, I'm just going to do my own thing. I'm going to try it and go to, remember he even mentioned, you know, there's, aren't, are not uh, rivers uh, uh, far par and, and uh, uh, the other one starts with an A. But anyways, uh, are they not, you know, better than all the waters here, you know? And, and uh, you know, even one of the servants says, hey, you know, if he asked you to do something great, would you not have done it? you know, and climbed a high mountain, defeated a, a great army, whatever, you would have done it. All he's asking is to do something simple. That's what God many times is desiring for us to do is just have that simple obedience, be willing to say, okay, Lord, I'll obey. I may not understand it, but I'll obey. I'll follow you and uh, watch how God will bless. Oh, we see there how important it is uh, as far as the plan uh, for the happy man is, is obedience. So the plan is uh, repentance and then faith. Uh, God desires for us to faith. By the, have faith. By the way, he wants our faith to grow and increase, amen? Not just say, okay, yep, I trust the Lord for salvation. But then uh, there are steps of faith in our life that he des- desires for us to grow in. And, uh, and then obedience, but also another plan uh, for, uh, for the happy man is this to have communion, to have communion. We're not talking about, uh, you know, we do observe uh, the Lord's Supper. And many times it's called communion and, uh, and all that, but that's not what he's talking about here. We are to have true fellowship with God. If you go all the way back to the Garden of Eden, all right? In the Garden of Eden, before Adam uh, falls, all right, before uh, the fall of man, before uh, Adam uh, partakes of, this, uh, of the fruit, by the way, it's not an apple, Amen. Uh, the Bible talks about it's the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, all right? Before he took of that, the Bible tells us that uh, they had uh, uh, walked, uh, you know, in the cool of the day uh, with God. Adam would walk in the cool of the day with, with God. When you look at that, uh, that means God was able to talk with, you know, I've, I've often wondered, what did they talk about? Amen. I don't know if you've ever done that. Just, just sat down and thought, what did Adam and God talk about as they were walking together, walking through the garden? Hey, look at this tree. Hey, look at this. You know, look at it. And you did a great job on naming a horse, a horse, amen. And uh, I'm glad it's not Mr. Ed, amen. <laughs> but, but all those different things that uh, Adam named, you know, this uh, uh, just uh, amazing. But, but to have that conversation, that, that fellowship. And then it talks about... Uh, um, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. He's not talking about those that were lost. I, I know the connotation is, or the implication is, uh, those that are unsaved, all right? That is, that is the implication. But what he's talking about is that fellowship. The fellowship, man does not have fellowship with God if he's unsaved. Those that are saved should have a communion, should have a fellowship with the Lord. You know, uh, uh, you know how we have fellowship? You know, uh, um, by the way, uh, brother, uh, brother Stan Kuhn uh, said to say hello uh, to all you folks. He was uh, calling me about something and, and a Facebook friend that uh, sent a request and uh, he friended and he said they were asking some weird questions. So I unfriended him. He just was wanting to know about him. And uh, uh, so anyways, I was, I was fellowshipping with him, told him, I said, hey, I'll be down there in March, uh, mid-March. And, and he said, I'd love to get with you. So I'm going to try and get with Brother uh, Stan Kuhn. Um, but uh, uh, anyway, what, did I t- what, what was I telling you about? Fellowship. Fellowship. There we go. Thank you. As we were talking, I'm not kidding you. 
By the time uh, we got done, I think I had talked with him about an hour on the phone. He's like, oh, pastor, I'm so sorry. I've, I've uh, wasted your time. I'm like, are you kidding? I've enjoyed this, amen? Uh, some of you know, he, I remember he was a former pastor and, and uh, we just uh, uh, hit it off real well when he was here. And, and I told him, I said, you know, I miss you being here. And he goes, I miss being there. And, uh, but anyways, uh, I, I just enjoyed fellowshipping, talking with uh, Brother Stan Kuhn. It was him talking to me, me talking to him. That's what fellowship is. This is what God desires to have with every single Christian. We talk to God through our prayers. Hey, Lord, how are you doing today? Lord, I just want to lay, uh, I want to give you some things that are on my heart. Lord, these are some burdens I have. Lord, uh, the Bible tells us, casting all care upon him, for he what? Careth for you. Uh, Lord, these are some things I, I want to share with you that are on my heart. Then, uh, you know, if, if uh, you ever had a conversation with somebody with only one way, they're always talking, you try to get a word, uh, well, um, hey, you know, and you never get a word in, amen? That's not true fellowship. True fellowship is where both people are able to have a conversation with one another. This right here, listen carefully, this right here, we, we talk to the Lord in prayer, amen? But this right here is how God talks to us. God desires to have communion with us. God desires to speak to us, but he does it through his word. I don't know how many times I've tried to emphasize in the last uh, six months or so uh, how important it is to be in God's word. And, and uh, I mentioned it uh, about uh, the word of God re very recently, uh, a message in, and uh, uh, how, uh, oh, it was a, uh, I think it was a Sunday school lesson. Or, no, it was uh, the Sunday morning message. I'm sorry, this last Sunday. Uh, how important the word of God is, amen? But back in our text here in verse number two, we're told uh, why this man is made and kept happy. Notice again, uh, back in our text, uh, Psalm chapter number one, verse number uh, two. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate, how often? Day and night. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. He is constantly and consistently in the word of God. Not just when uh, things are going bad. Oh, it's everything going bad. Oh, I better get in the Bible. <sighs> Amen. That's what we tend to do. If things are just extremely bad and, and finally we're like, oh, oh, I better try the Bible. Or I better try God. You know, uh, well, I haven't tried everything else. So I'll just try a little condiment of God, you know, on this. And, and uh, might as well try it, you know, see if it happens. Look, God desires to have a con constant and consistent uh, fellowship with us. Here in our text, he's not just uh, uh, going to God when he's having problems or just when everything is going great either. He is in the word of God so that he can have that communion with the Lord and he can, uh, can continually grow spiritually and ultimately cultivate his relationship with the Lord. The problem with a lot of Christians, they don't have a right relationship with God. Um, there are some, I, I hope it's not you, amen. There are some Christians, at best, Sunday mornings when they read the Bible. As pastor is telling them, hey, let's read the scripture together, amen. You say, well, that's not me, praise the Lord. But there are some Christians that are like that. There are some Christians, you know, the only time that they read the Bible, as I said, is when there's problems and they're overwhelmed with the problems. Oh, well, I, better, I better search the Bible and see what, the, what it says about my problems that I have. You and I have got to get to the point where we say, Lord, I want to be in your word every single day so that way you can speak to me through your word. You know what's amazing is, how, how many, uh, I, I know we've uh, asked this question before, how many have read the Bible through entirely in your life? At least one time, you've read it through, all right? Uh, how many read maybe uh, certain scriptures, uh, maybe you read uh, uh, Proverbs every single day, you know, there's uh, 31 days in uh, a month normally, there's 31 Proverbs, you know, whatever day of the, of the uh, week it is, uh, you read that proverb, today is, is it the 24th? Is it? 21st, uh, my brain. Anyways, uh, the 21st. So, uh, you know, you can read Proverbs 21 and, and so on and so forth. But uh, I'll tell you this. 
in the times that I've read my Bible through, right now uh, I'm in the uh, book. I think it's uh, end of. I'm toward the end of Deuteronomy right now. And all the times that I've read through the Bible, I've never gotten to the point where I don't get at least something from the Bible. And many times there's something that it's always been there. Amen. It's it's never changed. Amen. But it's just what I'm going through at that time, God reveals to me something that I needed to help me, either to encourage me or to challenge me or to help me to grow or whatever it may be. And God will show you those things that you need at that time in your life. Amen? And the problem with some Christians is they're missing out on it because they say, well, you know, the Bible's boring. You know, I I got to uh, Leviticus and so I just stopped reading my Bible. Okay, skip over Leviticus if that's your problem, amen? Go, go to Numbers, amen? There's Deuteronomy, there's, there's Joshua, there's Judges, amen? You can keep going right through the Bible, amen? There's all kinds of books in the Bible that are gonna be there, a, a, be a help to you and are there so that you can uh, uh, be able to have a better walk with God and so that way you can know the mind of Christ. Uh, was it, uh, I think it's Philippians chapter number two. It talks about having the mind of Christ. You know how we get the mind of Christ? The very book that's written about him. Amen. You want to get to know God more? Read the very book that is written by him. And it's the only book in in the entire world where no matter who is reading it, you could have multiple people reading it on all, uh, uh, all the corners of the earth and... The author is there with every single reader at the exact same time. That's pretty amazing, amen? There ain't another book in this world that's like that. But the Bible, it's very unique. And God's word is very, you know, the Bible tells us the Bible, uh, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit and uh, of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and what? Intense, the motives of the heart. You and I need to realize, hey, God's word is there to help us to uh, discern what is right, to discern what is wrong. And we need to be able to say, Lord, I want to be in your word so that I can have right communion with you. Amen? The problem with some Christians, they don't even have any kind of fellowship with God. It's, it's a one-way conversation. Lord, I want. Lord, I need. Lord, do this. Lord, do that. And God is trying. Yeah, they treat God like a, a slot machine. God, I've, I'm putting in my prayer. Come on, God. Come on. Give me a million dollars. Look, if you're not already obeying God, God's not going to give you a million dollars. Amen? Well, come on, God. I'm asking for this. Come on. Well, when's the last time God was trying to speak to your heart about something? whether it's through the preaching or the, the uh, teaching of God's word or just the Bible reading, amen, and God's trying to speak to your heart and you're like, oh, no, oh, oh, how dare, oh, how dare God even talk to me about that? And God's saying, hey, I'm trying to have fellowship with you, amen? It's like that uh, verse in the Bible, uh, uh, Psalm chapter number 66 and verse number 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, what happens? The Lord will not hear me. Amen. And sometimes God is trying to speak to our heart, trying to get us to make things right with him. And, and uh, we resist the Lord and, and uh, God desires for us to be happy. By the way, the Christian that is miserable is the Christian that resists that communion. Amen. That resists that fellowship with God. That says, nope, I don't want to read my Bible. Why? They're afraid of what God's going to show them. They're afraid of what God's going to tell them. Amen. And therefore, they become very, uh, you know, uh, uh, unhappy and, and, uh, you know, they look like they've been raised on, uh, you know, weaned on on dill pickle juice, you know, and mixed with lemon juice and mixed with uh, whatever else uh, sour you can think of. And, and, uh, you know, one of those sour bombs. Amen. And, uh, you know, look, God desires for us to have right fellowship with him. And when you have that right fellowship with him, it will affect you. It'll affect your countenance, amen? You're not going to be feeling guilty. Oh, it's pastor good. Is he going to preach on me again? I I shouldn't have to, you know, preach on, you know, I I, I wish, honestly, uh, 
I wish every single Christian would just obey the Lord every single time. But the reality of it is, is this, is we're human. And we get our feet and our toes someplace they shouldn't be. And then the pastor comes along and preaches a message and steps on our toes and we get mad at the messenger when it's not even his fault. Because we've been playing around with the sin or putting our feet somewhere where it shouldn't be. And God says, hey, I'm just trying to get you to the right place. Amen. I'm trying to get you to to, uh, follow me. And so we see there, as far as uh, uh, the plan for uh, the happy man, we see there uh, the repentance, the faith, the the obedience, and the communion. So uh, first of all, number one, uh, we see the, uh, I'm going to have to probably stop right there, but we see God's uh, picture of the happy man. Uh, We see God's plan for the happy man. And lastly, number three, uh, yeah, because if I even start going into this one, uh, we're going to go really late, and I, I do not want to do that. So uh, we, we'll stop there. Uh, we're going to look at next week, and we probably will finish this lesson. Uh, we're going to look at God's path for the unhappy man. We're going to see God's path for the unhappy man. There are some people, and I, I'm going to say this, uh, there are some people that are unhappy in this world because you're a Christian and you're happy, all right? There are some people, and you can't change that. Um, and, uh, but we're going to look at some things, uh, the path for the unhappy man, and uh, uh, we'll look at that next week. So bring that lesson back with you. We will uh, more than likely finish this lesson next week, and uh, then we'll uh, get into the next lesson after the week after that. So, all right, 